So they say it takes 10,000 hours to become a master at anything. And I've been training for six years, which I would never claim to be a master because I'm not. I'm still developing. I'm still growing. But I think it's important that I can make this video to help those people that have just started. Or if you're, you know, been training for a while but struggling. I'm going to give my best advice that I've learned good and bad over the last six years. And hopefully it can be beneficial to you. So, yeah, stay tuned. Make sure you get a pen and paper. Write some things down. Hopefully it should be valuable. So the first major piece of advice that I've, I've learned or the, the skills that I've learned over the last six years and the things I didn't expect to learn was how long trading will take to be to, for you to be successful. Like any business, like any degree you do or any job you do, social media purports that you can make loads of money so quickly and it's an easy way to make money. You can just start trading and you can start instantly making money. And I took a long time to get to where I am. I'm still progressing, like I said, but it took me three years initially to learn the skill set, join communities, learn from people that were better than me. And I was hesitant to do that at first because naturally I was fearful that they were going to scam me and that, you know, how can you trust who who's legit or not? So that's why I think this channel is good and I can make these videos to give you real, just real truth about the journey of trading. You see a lot of people promoting Lamborghinis and Ferraris and as much as you can achieve that, and there's one percent that are doing that for most, for the most part, it's a constant struggle for people. So yeah, number one, you have to be aware that it's going to take longer than you think and that's not necessarily bad. Like if you were instantly started making money, it'd be easy and everyone would be doing it and no one would be working. So the fact that it's taking you this long or maybe maybe you're doing well and you're now looking to scale up capital. All I'm saying is don't rush this process. Just take your time. Make sure that you are you have a set strategy. Make sure you have something that has an edge in the market because otherwise you're just effectively what you're doing is gambling. You need to make sure that you have tangible rules. You know exactly why your strategy works. You know your strike rate. You know your risk reward. You know how often you win. Um, the likelihood of you winning and you have all the data to back that up because if you have the data and you back tested that to know that it works it can give you confidence in, in executing your trade because you know if you take a few losses it's not the end of the world because you have risk reward on your side so it's important to have a, a set clear strategy i would say join a community i did um it can be free we've got a free community down down below but I would also, I'd say join a community as quick as possible because for a long time I put that off. I sat there and I thought, well, I don't want to, I think mine was like 80 pounds a month and I paid 80 pounds a month and I think I had live webinars, I could, they did trade recap videos and I was hesitant at first to, to do that. I was hesitant because I thought, what happens if they're not legit? What happens if they're scamming me? But I think the moment, obviously you'd have to do your due diligence. There's a lot of scammers out there. There's a lot of people that are just after your money, but for me, I took the risk and I ended up paying for education and it massively transformed my trading results because rather than me just being sat in my room learning it, learning on YouTube, learning from this guy, although that can be beneficial, sometimes you need professional education or, you know, like, like you wouldn't go to, you wouldn't start a job and want to work your way up without the basic information or knowledge or you wouldn't want to learn from people that, that haven't, haven't done it. So, or the same with a degree, like you're not instantly going to get the degree, it takes years, but you have to have that education. So I got the education, I paid for the education and it massively helped me. So I think number one, you have to have a set clear strategy. And if you don't have that, you're going to be forever going in this cycle of, you know, winning, losing. You're not going to reach any consistency because you're not consistent with your actions. You're not executing a consistent plan. So you're not going to produce consistent results. Once you've got a clear strategy, now this is what I made a lot of mistakes on. Don't change your strategy. Don't strategy swap. I see this happen so much. And I, I, I did it even the last few years I was doing it where you'd have a few losses in, on your strategy, which is natural. If you take three, people said to me, some guy messaged me the other day saying, oh, I've lost three trades in a row. I don't know what to do. And it's like three trades in a row. If that's part of your plan, part of your strategy, and they were good trades, the trades were part of your plan and they happen to lose. That's the sequence of probability. That happens. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's when you then look to change and look for the next best thing. Oh, I don't want to lose. I see a guy on Instagram that's posted a trade and he's won today. And I think, right, I can I can work out what he's done. Now. I'm going to trade that type of style. That doesn't allow your edge to play out because every, so if you have every, every strategy is going to have a losing period, have losing streaks. You're going to have winning streaks. And when you win, you win two, three times what you what you lose. So that's what gives you the winners. It's the curve needs to go up. Higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. So, so you have pullbacks, you have dips, which is where you have a couple of losses in a row or your, your equity goes down a bit. But if you change your strategy because you're concerned about losing, you're then going to you're going to swap, you're going to sw strategy swap and then you're going to maybe take a few wins on that. And then you're going to have a losing period on that and then think, well, oh, that doesn't work. So then you keep changing. You need to stick to your strategy. Make sure as long as you're comfortable with it and you have the edge and you have the data to suggest that it's going to be profitable. You need to stick with it and execute high probability setups. 
Don't look to change. Don't look to, as soon as you have a few losses, swap. Because you're going to end up blowing, like, you're just going to be in this vicious cycle looking for this shiny ball syndrome. You're looking for the next best thing rather than sticking with what you got. You know it works. Or if it, if, you, if you're not confident that it works, you need to backtest it to make sure that it does. But if, if people in your community are trading it, like in my community, there was times where I was down negative. I was like negative 2% at the end of the month and other people up 8%. So rather than me thinking, oh, this strategy doesn't work, they're, they're this. I was thinking, if they're up 8%, what have I done wrong? Look inward and think, what, what have you done wrong? And that's what I did. So don't strategy swap. So number one, you need to have a clear strategy. But number two, don't strategy swap. As soon as you have a few losses or you're having a down period, you need to make that strategy work. You need to become the edge as alongside your strategy. And if you're constantly changing, changing strategy, changing strategy, because you think that's the problem, most likely you're the problem. Yes, there's going to be some strategies that don't work, but you have to identify that by backtesting and getting the data. And that's down to you. But if you know it works and you've got a day, the data, you've got... Last year, we were made 50% from this strategy or 30%. You know the strategy works. You've got to make it work. And you can't allow a few losses for you to think, right, I'm going to change strategy. Oh, it's not going to work. Like a, a football team, the best football team in the Premier League, isn't going to, it's rare that they win 100% of their games. They have a few losses to teams that they shouldn't lose to. And they have a few wins against teams that they should win. The point is, is they don't have a 100% win rate. And if they change their whole overall strategy because they've had a couple of losses, they're not going to win the title. So the point is, is you can't just swap your strategy because you've had a few losses. Stick with the strategy you've got and you'll be profitable in the long term if you stick to it and learn from your mistakes. And lastly, one of the biggest things that I neglected, especially when I first started, was the psychological aspect of the game. I assumed when I first started, when I was 18 and I first got into it, which I'm sure a lot of you would feel is, everyone asks, what's your strategy? What's your strategy? Give me the strategy. And as much as strategy is extremely important, as I've just mentioned, you need to have a clear back-tested edge. You need to have the data in your on your favour to suggest that you're going to have an edge long-term. You're going to produce profitable returns long-term. There's no good having a profitable strategy if you can't understand your psychology, you don't understand the psychological aspects of the game. Everybody's different, and this is what I didn't realise. When I first started, my issues were down to me being risk-adverse. I was fearful to take trades. I would be more on the fearful side. But there's people on the, on the greed side where they enter with high risk, they're, you know, taking low probability setups just to try and get that money back after a couple of losses. But I was on the other end. If I took three or four losses, I was fearful to even take the high probability setups because I was I was more fearful. And that's what I didn't understand. But I learned that in the community because when I was in my community, I realized that at the end of the month, if I was down negative two, I assumed, well, we're all trading the same strategy. So surely we'd all be down negative. But there'll be people up 8%, 5%, 6%, and I'm down negative. Someone else is at break even. And I'm sat there thinking, how? How does that work? I thought we were all trading the same strategy. So we all know the same information. So we'll all get the same results. But it's you become the edge alongside your strategy. So there's times where maybe I took a low probability setup because I, I hadn't took a trade for a th few days and I was eager to get into the market. Or maybe I saw a high probability trade, perfect setup, go off without me. I didn't execute it because I wasn't at the desk. And then now i am got that sort of a fear of missing out because I'm seeing it play out in front of me. I'm like, oh, they're all up. I need to, I need to take a trade. So a lot of it, or maybe I've had a few losses, like I said, now I'm extremely fearful to take the next trade because oh, I'm down 4%. I can't keep losing. I lose again. And then, you know, you, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy sometimes. So you have to understand your own psychological like not struggles, but like you have to understand yourself. I understood from the way I am is that I'm more, I was more fearful. So I had to counteract that by having more mechanical rules, understanding why I feel a certain way, getting the data to give me more confidence and just understanding that lo losing isn't always bad. Losing a trade doesn't mean you've had a bad day. It's only a bad day if you didn't take a trade that's part of your plan. Because if everyone thinks, oh, did you win today? Yes, I won. Well, well done. That's a good day. No, it's not. If you made money today and it was luck, not skill, not part of your plan, you're going to then for lose long term because that was luck. I remember when I had a trade that made most money I've ever made. It wasn't massive amounts of money, but at the time it was. And it wasn't even part of my plan. I just entered on a trade on a little pullback on a five minute chart and it played out it. And I remember thinking, oh, this is cool. I think I was at school, I was just learning and I, was, I made not loads of money, but it was like, oh, I'm making money here. And then I thought to myself, I, I did that for months upon months after and I lost. So I, all that, that initial win made me happy, but then it wasn't good or sustainable long term. So I learned that it's part of a good trade is a trade that you took that was part of your trading plan, not part of not making money. You can have a perfect trade that loses, an A-plus setup that happens to lose because you can't win 100% of the time. And that's a good trade. So you, instead of looking at monetary-wise or at your account, you need to look at how good your trades are based on whether it was part of your plan. Was it 
the best setup, a high probability setup that is perfect. If that loses, that's an incredible trade. And if you win, but it wasn't part of your plan, that's a bad trade. So you need to identify what a good trade and a bad trade is. Like I say, a good trade isn't always how much money you make and a bad trade isn't always how much money you lose. A good trade is a trade that's part of your trading plan that you, you know works long-term, know has an edge long-term. So it, it's, it's so important to identify that and then that can help with your psychology because you know all I have to do is focus on the process, not the outcome. I need to execute the trades that I know I should and regardless of the outcome, because I can't control the outcome, I know if I've got an edge long term, I'll be up. So just keep executing the trades that part of my plan. Yep, has this happened? I'll be at an error value. Yep, has this broke? Like you have your rules. And as soon as you see that, you have to execute. And that's that's what I would say. So I hope you guys got value. A few bits of advice in this video that I've learned over the six years of me trading. A lot of hours spent. Again, I'm still progressing. So I think it's valuable for someone who's just started trading to watch this and hopefully learn something. And hopefully, hopefully you got value from it. So yeah, if you did, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.